Yo, yo, yo. Hey guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show podcast. This podcast is another installment in my regular conversations with Dr. Christian Coachman from DSD. And today he addresses one of the hottest topics we see consistently. It's called burnout. He gives us a great treatment plan, the three P's to avoid burnout. Please listen to this. I know you'll enjoy it and we'll see you soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. This is our special edition with an awesome human being in an incredible organization, DSD, that we're doing on a regular basis with Dr. Christian Coachman. So I want you to tune in. And today we're going to be addressing one of the hottest topics that we get all the time in dentistry, which is how do I keep the fire alive? I'm a little burnt out. I'm a little unsure about the future. And Christian, before we hit the go button, we were talking about this, this is a hot topic all over the world. Um, but let's start here. I want to start here. We're going to cover that. So thank you guys for tuning in and thank you guys for listening. Christian, I always want to start here and have you introduce yourself a little bit, give a little bit of story about the DSD uh, revolution, who you are and where you are today. Where are you today? <laughs> today, first of all, good afternoon. Good morning over there. Good afternoon here. I'm in Madrid, Spain the headquarters of DSD, Digital Smile Design Company, the company that I founded 10 years ago uh, that is focused on education and services to help practices grow. That's basically what we do, more towards the clinical planning side, manufacturing, marketing, team training, uh, portfolio of solutions, right? And um, um, this all started with my experience as a dentist, but also as a dental technician. I always introduce myself more as a dental technician than a dentist. That's what I did for 20 years. Um, and I was able to travel the world, work with some of the best dentists in the world, very proud of my work as a ceramist. And because of this dual perspective, I was able to really understand the pain points, the bottlenecks when transforming somebody's smile, uh, the challenges, and uh, I started to try to find solutions. Connecting to what you said, you know, dentistry stuff is very stressful. And if systems are poor, we go crazy very easy. So I was always into systems, processes, protocols, workflows, recipes. And I started to develop my, my solutions to, to try to work with more quality, less stress. Started to teach about it, and that's where the DSD courses started. Uh, and then it evolved into this company that helps dentists after they come to our courses to try to implement, help them implement all these ideas. Modern, comprehensive digital care. Modern, comprehensive digital care powered by technology, improved patient experience better dentist lab communication uh, and everything that follows. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> and as uh, you just recently did a DSD residency in Spain, I had three friends of mine over there, Dr. Angela Lewick, uh, Lisa Teal and Dennis Hartley. And uh, Dennis came back. I just interviewed him in the podcast just a little bit ago. He's like, Kirk, it's, it's crazy. Not only is it unbelievable what they do, but you guys know how to throw a party. There. <laughs> you now, now it's not it's not always just about party, but it's really about the experience. It's the experience yes. of the whole. Can you explain that? Yes. Yeah, you know, in modern society, we know it's not only about the quality of the thing that we are there for, but it's about the whole experience, right? Mm -hmm. Top restaurants, top hotels every single very successful company, they all generate amazing experiences. And dentists, you know, they want great education, but they love when they also get 
great experiences. So this is a trademark of DSD. I think we've been mastering this since day one. We always had this thing in, on the social side, on the relationship side, really making people feel comfortable and making people have fun, uh, connect and enjoy the moment, creating moments. I think that's, that's uh, an art to create special moments. And um, we live for that, you know, yeah. and I was able to build a team that is mastering this process, creating memorable moments, meaningful moments. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And so we're gonna have links down in the show notes for you to check out if you're curious. I'm gonna highly encourage you to check that out. And today we're gonna be talking about burnout. It's the hottest topic we get. Week mm -hmm. in, week out, meeting dentists, people tell us, whether it be face-to-face, -face, in an email, I'm just losing steam a little bit. It's the speed mm -hmm. of the world. Um, give us your perspective. You speak to dentists all over the world. Yeah. I speak to dentists mostly in the United States. Yeah. What's, what's your thoughts? First, I, I want to say on this, this is a huge topic, and I feel the pain of everybody, right? My whole family is in dentistry for many generations. I know exactly what you're talking. You know, dentistry is an extremely stressful profession. It's known, we know that. It's scientifically proven, right? There's articles about it. It's one of the most stressful professions out there. Uh, it's an amazing profession, amazing profession, but also very stressful profession. And the distance between amazing and very stressful is very little. <laughs> There's a th thin line in between I'm loving what I'm doing and uh, I'm not loving it at all, right? Um, that's, uh, so first of all, I think it's important for us to acknowledge how stressful dentistry is and to understand the reasons why dentistry is so stressful, you know, physically and mentally. And then start to ask ourselves why some dentists are not stressful at all. You know, why some people can just work, work, work and have fun working and others, what I see, unfortunately, the majority are, are struggling, right? And, um, you know, I always use as an example, the story of my father. Mm -hmm. My father is a dentist, he's 72 years old. He's in great shape. He's still working more than ever, uh, Monday to Friday at least. And he does charity on Saturdays, many times, treating patients. <laughs> uh, so he worked, and he, in, in Brazil, you know, it's very common. People work like 12 hours a day. You know, and he's doing that for 50 years, five decades. And uh, I compare this to my, some of my friends, you know, dentists, even good dentists that are tired. You know, they are not even close to the age of my father. And they're like, man, I want to do something else. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I maybe I, can I start lecturing and just to break the routine, you know, can I... I need to diversify the way I make money, you know, because I don't know I can do this for 10 more years. Uh, so these are common uh, comments that you probably get as well, right? How, right. you know, I, I want to get out of it. I want to exit, you know? Right. And when you're thinking and feeling like that before you're even 50 or around 50, you, you have a problem, right? And so I started to analyze the situation of these friends, colleagues that were tired, struggling, or in and out, sometimes better, sometimes worse, comparing with my father. My father is the opposite. You know, we tell him to slow down. Dad, you're 72, slow down. He's like, why? You know, I, I'm not going to slow down. I love it. Mm -hmm. And he, and he, you know, he went through a lot of stress, you know, financially in Brazil, very, very tough. The government is constantly working against you. Whatever initiative to be an entrepreneur in Brazil, you need to be completely mad and crazy because, you know, it's very hard. I know it's hard anywhere, but 
when people complain about economical conditions in US, when people complain about governments in US, I laugh at them. I say, you have no clue mm -hmm. <laughs> how amazing it is to be a dentist in US, how amazing it is to have a business in US. It doesn't matter who is the president, your country works and, and the, the, the things just are functioning, right? And uh, business-wise, you have the structure to support you. Um, if you, if you, even during pandemic, you know, yeah. practices in Brazil were by themselves. I, I look here in Europe and in US, the way the governments supported small businesses and, and giving money and this, right? Everybody was stressed, but man, it's completely different than being on a developing country like Brazil. You are by yourself. So I'm just setting the stage here to say that conditions were never favorable to my dad. He uh, started businesses. He was never, uh, uh, you know, a super business person. So he made business mistakes. He went bankrupt. He lost all the money. He started again, started practices three, four times. And 50 years after all this back and forth, ups and downs, he's working like crazy super healthy, motivated. And every time we talk to him and we say that you should slow down, you know, at one point he said, you, can you guys please stop, right? Mm -hmm. And he said something, he said, I don't give energy to dentistry. Dentistry gives energy to me. And I hope I will never stop doing dentistry. And I want to do it efficiently. And I, I don't want to do just like for fun. No, I want to do the real thing. I want to treat people the way I always treat it. And I enjoy the challenges. I enjoy the problems. I enjoy the fact that I'm learning. I make mistakes and I do it again. And I work with the team and I suffer with the team and I struggle with the team and I do it better again. And I improve relationships and I'm, I'm there active, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started to ask myself, what makes the difference between going on the direction that my dad was able to go and going the direction that you, you know, you feel like you're struggling. And I was able to find three things that my dad consciously or unconsciously, I don't know exactly, Three things that he did that I believe are the magical recipes for him to still love what he's doing. And every single morning say, I want to do it again, right? Mm -hmm. And I call it the three P's. P's for passion, pride, and performance. Passion, pride, and performance. So I was able to realize that my father from time to time is able to reignite his passion for dentistry cyclically. You know, mm -hmm. he never lets passion drop and he finds ways to be passionate about it. I realize that my father is always reframing his pride for what he does, expanding his pride, finding things that gives him more meaningful pride. And I realize that my father is constantly open to improve his performance, to challenge himself, to have an open mind for new things, new ways of doing what he's doing, even though he is a very good dentist. And 30 years ago, he was already a very good dentist. <laughs> right. And he's constantly reinventing himself. So um, for me, this is the magic formula. You're know, nurturing your three Ps. So yeah. the question is, how can we nurture our three Ps? Right. So, so let me go back. Enjoy. Go yeah. ahead. Let me ask you about the first. Can I ask you about each one of them? Yes. Because <laughs> I'll be the dentist who's listening. Christian, I love this. You know, when you say your dad, he doesn't give energy to dentistry. It gives energy to him. I love it. 
And so let's, let's talk easy about to say, time. right? <laughs> easy to say. And when your passion is, you know, you can feel it going away where let's diagnose this. Where do you think the passion starts to, where the fire, if you talk about reigniting, when does the fire start to get a little dim? When, when can I call out some of those signs when I see them personally? So th this is not easy, right? How, how can you keep your passion going? And I, be I believe that uh, the passion comes from knowing that you're doing something different, right? And many times being different is more powerful than being better. You know, I love, you know, the difference, to analyze the difference between being better and being different. And for me, being different is, is more powerful than being better. Mm -hmm. And as you find ways to do dentistry in a different way, you keep your flame alive. So, you know, being in the comfort zone is the killer of passion. Mm -hmm. and you know doing things the same way you always did kills passion so you need to leave some time you know of course you're not you cannot create chaos by changing everything all the time and many times you're doing things very well and you want to keep that but you need to to always leave some time every week for you to think about how can I be different? And even more, not only being different, but making people see you as different. For me, a compliment that somebody tells me, Christian, you are great. That's a good compliment. Fantastic. Right. But if somebody comes to me and say, Christian, you are different. That is for me 10 times a better compliment. Right. right? So it's not only about being different, but making people perceive you as different. Mm -hmm. And that makes you alive, feel, feel alive, because you know you're doing, you're creating an impact in a different way. You know, one thing is for people to come to you just because it's convenient to go to you. Another thing is for people to get out of their way and drive to the other side of town or to fly into a different city to see you because they feel like you're different. Right. So making your team also understand that what you guys do is different and special, you know, makes the team more passionate. Yeah. So I think that there's many ways to be passionate about what you do. One way is to practice or to do this exercise of asking yourself, how can I be different? And how can I make people perceive me as different? And just this pursuit makes you alive again, right? Yeah. So I think that it's something that we need to, to exercise. Um, and if that doesn't really fit you, you need to ask yourself, how can I reignite my passion from time to time? You know, And this is one of the best things from the courses that we give, you know, one of the best compliments that I get is when very established dentists come into our courses, many of them saying, you know, I'm fading, I'm reducing, I'm planning my exit. I came to your course and I feel like doing dentistry for 10 more years. That is for me the best. And yeah. we get it, we get that all the time, you know, people are like, yeah. And then at the end of the course, they're like, damn, I wish I did this course five years ago, 10 years ago. And I said, look, it's never too late. And then the person says, yes, I feel it. And I'm, I'm not going to sell my practice yet. I'm going to reverse this. I want to do this for a few more years. And that's amazing. So uh, allow some space for you to see different stuff and see how this is going to impact your passion. I would agree. We always say you got to have your best years in front of you. Part of going to a great course like that is 
you do see things differently and you don't have to be like a different person, but you've got to look at things differently a little bit. And so, yep. and I think when it's deeply rooted in a, a very good cause, like there are people that fix, den- fix teeth and there are people that change lives. And when you can see yep. it differently, your team can see it differently. I agree. It's, it's bigger than work. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Very well said. Tell us about pride. What does that mean? Now you? that's also very cool. Uh, what I noticed um, in, in my father is that he's very proud of his work, right? He's very proud of his legacy. He's very proud of his team. He's very proud of not only about his dentistry, and that's the difference here. Of course, when you do a great surgery, when you finish a great case, when you bond a great composite, you know, when you do a, a great implant placement, when you perform something very well and you know you did well, you're proud. Mm-hmm. But that's a technical proud, right? That fades. That is, you, 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 you're proud of your implant placement once, then twice, then 10 times, 100. But when you get to 500 implants and you're doing it exactly the same way and you're doing it very, very well, you're not proud anymore. You know, it's just on auto mode. Right. So technical high performance makes you proud, yes, but... It's not the type of pride that I believe will make you do dentistry for 50 years or even 30 years. And the pride that I'm talking about is the pride of generating a much deeper impact on the people around you. So not only on the patient, but mainly on your staff. What I realized about my father is that he's proud of his dentistry. He's proud of the compliments that he gets from his patients, yes. But above all, he's proud of his team and he's proud of how his project made their lives better. That's the ultimate level of pride for me. Mm -hmm. If you want to get to not be tired of doing dentistry, you need to generate an environment. You need to transform your practice into a project that makes the lives of your team members better. And when you see that happening, you're so proud of yourself. And that pride feeds you forever, right? You wake up even, you know, on a tough day, you find the strength to get through. When you look at your staff, you look at the project that you started, your practice, your baby, your little company, and you realize that this is not belonging to you anymore. It belongs to everybody and everybody there feels like that and they live for that and they are proud of being there and they want to be there forever and their lives are better because they are there and their spouses are proud because they are there and the kids are having a better life because they are there and everybody's growing together and you look back and you see people working with you for 10, 20, 30 years. You know, my father has people working with him for 30 years. And, and you say, damn, this is amazing. I can do this all over again. That's yeah. the level of pride that I'm talking about. And uh, so here, my suggestion is to find that inspiration with your team by making changes and creating the structure to make your team have a better life because they work there with you. And this is going to be an auto feed of energy right? that will make you not want to quit. Yeah. I love it. And the way you describe pride very well, I think of legacy. Yep. You know, you're leaving something bigger than you and it's yep. a flywheel that once yep. you get it going, you also understand the responsibility that it's not yours. You know, yep. it's bigger than you. Wouldn't you agree? I, that's, that's the challenge of leadership, right? Great leaders, they don't get tired of doing what they're doing, period. Right. You, if, if you see great leaders, they do what they do forever and they're never tired. Why? Because of that, because of the legacy that 
that generates this pride. You know, one thing is to squeeze, 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 get everything, save your money, build your, 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 uh, your financial situation. And then, of course, if you're working for that, you will always dream with the exit, right? Every right. single day, because you're working for that. You created that scenario. And even unconsciously, your team feels it energetically. Right. I believe in energy. Energetically, people know when you are there to cash out. You can't fake it. They can see it. Yeah. So, yeah. of course. Uh, and then you don't feed this circle with this beautiful energy that comes from pride of being there. Love it. Love it. Now let's go into performance because I totally so that's get That's the it. third aspect. Yeah. The third aspect that I realize keeps my father going. So after finding ways to be different and to keep his passion going, reframing his pride by really transforming his project into the project of everybody. You know, just back on the pride, the, my father was able to build a legacy where even patients felt like part of the project. It's amazing. Patients felt like part of the project. Pa I, I would speak with some patients of my father and they would speak to me if, if, as if they were partners of the clinic, of the practice. They felt like that, like investors, right? They, they would defend the practice and they would compliment, they would talk about it to others as if they were shareholders. Yeah. They were emotional shareholders. That's how I would call them. Love it. Many patients and many of the staff members, they were emotional shareholders in the practice. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that you cannot be more proud of it th than this, you're right? You look around and you see this happening and he, he can see this and that keeps him going. Now, the third one is performance because you can be very passionate about something, but very bad at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I'm very passionate about guitars, but I, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> So there's two different things, but you can be very good at it and not be passionate as well. The opposite. Right. I'm very good at whatever, but I'm just not at super passionate about it. We see people with natural talent. So the beauty is to combine both, right? To love something and to be very good at something. Right. Again, uh, Being good, being a good dentist by itself will make you want to continue to be a dentist. But that's not enough because I, I, I mentioned the example of colleagues that, that are very good and they're struggling emotionally, right? right? And they're tired. So just being good, performing very well is not enough. So what I saw in my father when it comes to performance, being good is a given. You have to be good, right? Right. But the plus comes from being open-minded to reinvent your performance, right? right. Is the beginner's mind. That's yeah. the lesson I learned from him, the beginner's mind. That beautiful, and there's a beautiful Buddhist description of the beginner's mind and why, why you know, as we become good at something, we stop learning. And the key is to always learn become very good at something and continue to learn and that means that even if you are a master at something you need to pretend you're not right you need right. to pretend you are a beginner when you're listening to others when you're going to a lecture when you're listening to your assistant when you're listening to your technician you pretend you are a beginner you really take your super expert hat off and you put your beginner's hat on and just by mentalizing and pretending you're a beginner you you already listen in a different way right you don't listen to answer you listen 
to learn. Yeah. This is something that I learned because I'm, I was always very good answering. So I missed many opportunities in my life to learn because I was listening to somebody already building my answer and I was eager to show the person that I had an answer for whatever they were saying. And I realized later on that I was missing an opportunity. I was behaving like an expert and not like a beginner. I was not wearing my beginner's mind and I was stuck. Mm -hmm. So for me, the third P is to not fall into the temptation of I am a master. I know what I'm doing and that's enough for me. Yeah. And uh, here, you know, I can see every time I would come with something new, my father was always the first. Say, damn, I never thought about that. Let's try. You know, go for it. Go for it. And, and you know, that's how DSD started. And his practice was the first one to implement in the world, of course. And he was completely open to it, even though it's not easy. Yeah. To... Yeah. And you use the word open, you know, Peter yeah. Dawson said, don't ever say you have it all figured out. Kirk, he used to say that all the time. I'm always open, you know, and yeah. I learn a lot from the students. I also want you to speak about performance. One of the things that's amazing about the DSD, you know, team, we watch you guys come over here. You guys like to have a lot of fun. It's not just performance with patience. You guys take good care of yourselves. You know, you're big on the health thing. None of you are overweight. You still have fun. I mean, physic. Talk about the physical stamina and how important yeah. that is. I've never met your father, but yeah, I can't well, imagine. My father's a machine. I can't imagine my, he's overweight and and hurting everywhere. You know, he's in amazing shape. He's a, he's a always. Uh, you know, I, I. That's actually I could add that that fourth P that is having an external hobby that makes you passionate about life, right? that feeds your passion for your dentistry as well. Uh, yeah, you need, you need to find, you know, I don't like the word balance. Why? I have to be honest. Because I gave up many years ago trying to find balance. I was, I was being very, very hard on myself because I was not finding balance. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give up finding balance. Right. And I felt very good about it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, balance, it's overrated. <laughs> 100%. It's, uh, it's, not a, it's, it's, it's about enjoying the moment, right? right? I, I believe. So, uh, so if you're doing something, oh, man, I'm, I'm doing too much of this and too little of that. Of course, you know, you can discuss balance, et cetera, but, you know, just deep dive in whatever you're doing and do it the best you can. And if you want to really go full power on something for, you know, how, how can you write a book? I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book. How can you find balance when you're writing a book? You need to just deep dive and do it and go crazy and right. work overnights and weekends and, and balance, you know, there's no balance. If you think about balance, you're not going to get things done, you know? And yeah. so I, I, I don't like the word balance. I like the word, living the moment yeah and enjoying the moment right yeah i agree i i, th I think balance is it's not a good it's not a good journey for me it's and you, you feel guilty so makes you feel guilty it makes you it feel does. guilty it does i'm I out mean, of balance i'm out of balance like in the in the moment it, first of all we only have 24 hours all you have to figure out is what's the most important things i have to do and spend your time doing them, whatever they are. Yeah. That's for yeah. everyone to decide, but you'll love this. I, I use this and I probably shouldn't, but I have 854 unopened text messages right now. I will have, <laughs> by the end of this podcast, I'll have 872. Is it a good idea for me to try to keep up? No, no. I just have to figure out what to do during the day that yep. makes me feel like I'm living a good life, whether it be the big things, whether it be at home, you know, once but you say no, out, giving up on things, it's a, it's a, it's an art, huh? It's a, it's a, it's, it's a not blessing. easy. You have to figure it out. Like everyone it's has to, blessing, I agree you know, you say yeah. you give up, you know, I gave yeah. up 
on many things, you know. Uh, you know, people say I, 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 I'm not healthy because I'm not balanced. I'm, I'm working too much. Right. But, but the, the problem is not working too much. <laughs> if you're working too much, you know, for a certain period of your life and you're just loving it so, so much, this is not going to harm you. You know, it's, right. it, that's not the problem. You know, the problem is that you're working too much and you're doing too many things that you're not enjoying. That's the problem. You know, yes. I could play tennis eight hours every day. This is completely out of balance. Mm -hmm. But I know I would love every minute of it. <laughs> and I could do it for 10 years full power. And I would not be tired. You know, it's, it's not balanced, you know. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we need uh, another thing. I, 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 we need to make dentistry a, a little bit more fun. This is another mission of ours. You know, we want to make dentistry more fun. You, you, you know what? You, you need to feel like you are cool. Right. That's another thing that makes you want to work on what you're doing, whatever you're doing. You need to look at yourself, you know, and, and say, wow, man, what I'm doing is cool. I feel cool. This is cool. My practice is cool. Patients, they come here and they say, damn, this is cool. Yeah. You know, I go out with my team members and they say, boss, you're cool. Mm -hmm. Right? So you need to make your environment cool. And there's all kinds of ways to be cool, right? I'm not talking about the stereotype of being cool, you know, wearing an Italian suit and some handkerchief. Or, no, no. There's all kinds of ways of being cool, right? You need to find your way. What makes you look cool? What makes you feel cool? What makes other people say you are cool? Your practice is cool. Your team is cool. Not nice. I, nice can be a kind of a tricky compliment. Oh, everybody here is nice. I prefer everybody here is so f damn cool, you know? <laughs> everybody here is so damn cool. I yeah. like that. So I do too. I don't know sure. if I would say cool. I, for me, I'm not cool, but I, I definitely want to cool, have man. fun. I want to have fun. You are very cool. <laughs> cool. You're very yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's different ways of being cool. Right. You need to find your way of being cool. You, you are extremely cool, Kirk. People, you go, your office is super cool. Your team is cool. You know, the events that you organize are cool. The place we went for dinner where you take your students super cool right so if i can summarize my experience at your place with you damn it was cool that's nice it compliment. was a cool experience you're making me feel that's good it. today yeah. thank you okay so you see you get i got i gave you a few more years doing what you're doing <laughs> you just gave it you just gave me a ton of energy you know so i really appreciate that. the cool factor that's what i call the cool factor yeah i love it i love it you now need christian to become a cool dentist yeah. Now, I know in a lot of people listening, I want to, I want you to talk about what you're up to and how I can find out more, but any last thoughts you have on how I can regain my passion, have a little bit more pride and improve my performance. Any last thoughts? Separate some very high quality moments of your week to define what means success for you. What means success for you? And it's, it's, it's definitely something away from money and fame. Yeah. Money and reputation. This kills us. Money, right. the pursuit for money, the pursuit for reputation kills us. And the pursuit for growth. Unfortunately, our society defined as success something that is always growing compared to last year right i'm completely against this why uh, the definition you know oh this year our company had a profit of whatever or grew 10 percent. definition of western capitalist world mm -hmm. if last year if next year you grow five instead of ten you are a failure you had a bad year Explain me why. This because crazy 
process of eternal growth. The curve needs to always go up. Why is stability doesn't mean success. If I had a good year, I had a good life. Right. I took a decent amount of money home. My team is happy and they had a good life and my patients are happy. If I copy paste my performance of this year, next year, and I do exactly the same, why investors and business people would look to my numbers and say, yeah, I think this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that the pandemic helped us to, to reset this a little bit, to, to see that suddenly the whole world stopped growing and all the numbers went down. We survived and many people had many months of even a healthier life. Yeah. Because suddenly not growing was the normal. Totally agree. And so, you know, instead of, you know, we, we need to be smart business wise, of course, but this eternal pursuit of growth and money and recognition can kill us. Dan, very well said, Christian. Now, I, if I'm listening to the podcast and I want to learn more about DSD, where do I go? Where do I start? How do I find out more about what you're doing? Digitalsmiledesign.com. And the first step to start your journey into modern comprehensive digital care is by joining us at the DSD Residency One. DSD Residency One, our course that is focused on ethical growth, ethical case acceptance. That's what we teach. Mastering the process of ethical case acceptance. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So again, if you're not taking notes, don't worry, we're taking notes for you. I'm going to encourage you guys, flip up to the notes in Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this podcast, and you'll see links to everything that Christian has mentioned. Please check it out. So Christian, thank you, brother, for being on. I appreciate you as always. Always fun, my friend. Always a pleasure. And uh, you're going to see as you guys keep tuning in these uh, coming weeks, we've got some clinical masters coming in and uh, we're just going to up our game on best practices and coffee with coachmen. Uh, so keep tuning in. You'll see more of that on the horizon. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed today, do us a favor, hit the share button and share this podcast with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for things that you guys want to see. We will keep lining them up. And until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.